Ahoy, Captains. This is Uncle Neil coming at you today with the first of a new program called Series of Legends. This is where I meet up with notable subsim players, developers, and enthusiasts to discuss the games, mods, and submarine history. Today's guest is John Golden Rivet Seeley. John attended the subsim meet in Houston in 2008 and is a committed U boat player. I thought I'd catch up with John and get him to tutor me in the game. You can probably wonder why I haven't already gotten good at this game. Well, I'll explain that in the video. Hope you enjoy it. You've been a big fan of, of U-Boat from the beginning. Uh, you actually wrote the review for Subsim for me, and you did a really good job. Tell me what your first impressions of U-Boat were when you got it. Well, I was excited about U-Boat when I first saw the... The reveal videos before it was even released you know i was like man i can't wait to get my hands on this thing but um at first yeah it's kind of been fun watching u-boat grow up because at first i thought it was when i first got my hands on it it was almost a little i don't know campy or cheesy because you you know you could shoot your cook for burning the scrambled eggs and <laughs> you know they've done away done away with a lot of those kinds of things but uh it's Originally had drawn a lot of its inspiration off of the, you know, survival sandbox type games. And as it's grown the last few years or a couple of years, that's kind of transitioned into drawing a lot of its inspiration from a deeper well of like, you know, your Silent Hunter 3 and 4 and uh, and those types of subsims. So it's kind of been wa fun to watch it sort of, you know, develop over time into what it is now yeah it has made a big big splash i mean it is sort of like the sequel to silent hunter 5 in a way uh sandbox games something i think we've been looking forward to for quite a while yeah definitely yeah it does have a lot of silent hunter 5 elements in it and you know, one of the one of the things i really like that they did is the cutaway view uh, we we go back to like these games like silent hunter 3 and 4 uh, where you've got like the 2D ship schematic sort of damage control yeah. and you can click on a compartment it'll tell you what's wrong and you know your guys will just fix it you know but now we've got away from that sort of schematic page to now we have a live real-time cutaway of the ship and it's going to show you what I mean if you want to know what's damaged all you got to do is walk up and look at it yeah now, how do you think the uh, developer's response has been to the feedback they've got from the players? Uh, you know, I visit the Steam uh, discussion boards not daily, but I, I do visit quite a bit. And um, i got to hand it to the dev team. I mean, Deepwater Studios, anytime they get a bug report, you know, these guys just work their tails off to kind of get these things squashed and... It's uh, we've called it a labor of love, and it almost has to be in this genre because it's such it's such a niche thing. You know, it's it's not like your first person shooters where you've got a team of a hundred people working on it. You know? Yeah, yeah. But they just they just go all in, and I'm not sure, but I think this might be their first big publishing. Well, they, they did a good. They they're off to a good start. I mean, from my perspective. The game had a pretty wide scope to start with, and the the environment and the graphics were really first rate. I mean, I really love to watch the U-boat sailing on the ocean. That looks that looks really good. Yeah, you know, I play for um, just for a performance standpoint. I mean, I've got a pretty decent rig, but uh, the even with my water effects turned as low as they go, I mean, it's still. I mean, it looks great. This is one of the things I like about U-Boat is when you download these mods, you get this, uh, you know, you, we used to have, what was it called, the SH-3 Commander. Or, I'm sorry, not that, the... Uh, the Jonesoft? Generic, yes, the generic mod enabler. Well, you get sort of a stock mod enabler that comes up right away, and it's it's nice to be able to work with that because you can just turn mods on and off. Yeah. But the uh, kind of the downside to the modding community right now, the modding community is really active, but the downside to that is is Deepwaters is coming out with new stuff so frequently that you know they kind of have to 
jump through their own tails to get these uh, these mods up to date because sometimes there's just not backwards compatibility. Sure, sure. Yeah, that's one reason why Oscar and, and the devs for Wolfpack have said that they're not offering any support for mods until the game is finished because they know there's going to be a lot of rework required. Yeah, definitely. To hit new game, right? Yep, it, uh, well, let's see, it jumped away. I think you're back on the, there you go. Okay. So, yeah, you're going to go into new game, and basically what we start out with is you've got, like, your, I don't know, if you want to uh, call them stories there on the left. Yeah. So, uh, U-48, the war begins. That's kind of like your, I think it starts you two or three days before the invasion of Poland. Then you move into the Atlantic War, um, the uh, Arctic campaigns, uh, Mediterranean. I don't even know if they've got the, the Mediterranean populated with units yet. Uh, I haven't been in there, but U four or um, U forty eight there at the top is really just kind of a good place to start. Perfect. And uh, one of the things that I don't like right out of the gate is uh, the, the budget system and what we had renown in the silent hunter series now you have reputation points so you don't get a lot of that to start with so like a lot of these things like rebreathers and torpedoes and all of that you know as a as a new captain on the base you know you're you're using your budget and your reputation points to buy these things and it kind of seems like some of this stuff should be standard issue yeah so you're kind of making do until you get more reputation yeah, and until you until you develop a name for your skipper, you're sort of uh, you know low man on the totem yeah. pole there. All right, so difficulty normal. That sounds like what I should start with. What it's going to do in the lower right hand corner when you hit next, it's going to allow you to set up your various difficulty settings. So okay. I think when it's when it's starting about uh, when it's saying the difficulty there it's the overall difficulty of that campaign right so I use the hardcore aiming and the only difference between um, entertaining balanced and hardcore that I've been able to find is in the entertaining your crew can just calculate targeting solutions and all of that for you and you you just point and click and it'll do it for you balanced it gives you a combination between you can hardcore it yourself or you can have your crew uh, target that ship for example and they'll calculate the solution and then hardcore is you're on your own your crew will not do anything for you I mean they'll load the torpedoes and heat them up and all that but you've got to gather all the targeting data yourself so whichever one of those three you're most comfortable with I mean you're obviously a seasoned silent hunter player so you should be no stranger to hardcore mode Nope, I agree. I think the uh, as long as I've got you to get me started on the interface, I'll probably be fine. Okay. Yep. How much involved? So now that you've selected that, now that you've done that, you'll go to the bottom right and go to the next. It'll allow you to select the difficulty and the crew management. Um, I use expert, but um, you know I've got a lot of play time, so like intermediate might be a good one for you. Okay. But um, let's do that. I don't, I don't, I don't think you're gonna have any problem with that either. All right, gameplay perspective. What's the perspective? First person or normal? Okay. AI difficulty. Yes. Economic. So, uh, an in, an interesting thing that I'll point out is in your damage difficulty setting. Yeah. They have kind of this remark at the bottom that I just noticed the other day. So if you hover over the where it says damage difficulty. It says here that if you pursue realism, we recommend the average, which I'm assuming they mean medium setting, because it's. Okay. It says here there's limited data to support claims that there's an observational bias towards the survivability based on photographs and written records. So I run on medium, and the reason I do that is if you put it on hard, um, you're going to get what I call nuisance damage. So if you dive very deep torpedo hatches will leak and things like that it just happens with less frequency it seems when you use you no know, easier medium okay let's do that then everything else looks good I'm going next I'm excited about getting out in the harbor I've done the tutorial a couple times voice one body heavy looks all good looks good 
hairstyle bald that sounds about right hair color okay oh i get to pick a name yep it'll uh when you go to the next it'll let you pick the name but you can really kind of the, some of the fun here is you get to customize your entire crew right down to the lowest rating which i mean that's fun for some people and others may not care but yeah you know a lot of people like that is. activity it's it's engaging yeah you kind of develop a crew that that uh i don't know it's almost like uh you're a little bit closer to them and don't want to lose them if you made them all from scratch, I guess yeah. you could say. Yeah, you got a closer association. All right, we're at the loading screen. Come on, baby. Loading, loading, loading. A little circle stop going around though. There it goes. It's trying to come back to life. And I don't know if you played through it. Maybe trying to build a cache or something. Maybe so. It'll eventually get loaded. At least it's got a nice graphic to look at while it's loading. Wolfpack's just a black screen. A lot of times people think the game is froze up on them. Port of Wilhelmshaven. Okay, we're in business. Oh yeah. Black Friday. Here we are. Getting our orders, I suppose. Yeah, for the first, uh, for your first patrol, it's basically going to give you a, a a shakedown, I suppose. But you, know, you have an opportunity here to provision your boat, and that's kind of the frustrating thing is you don't start out with a whole lot of budget or reputation points, so you're kind of limited. They give you this little uh, intro, you know, sweeping views here. It's kind of, kind of nice. Pretty good interior. Great interior. Looks like what I would expect. Okay, so. I think you and I are talking in real time, but you're probably seeing my screen about five seconds after me. Yeah. So I'm going to talk yep, to so. That guy. And then uh, get some yeah, the here. training. Okay. Yes. So this brings up the menu where you can look for orders from the Admiralty, um, but if you click around anywhere, you, he'll get rid of that message. Now, can I click on any of these five options, or do I have to click on the first one? Uh, who needs training? Um, you know, I have my tutorial turned off, so I don't think you have to do the the training. But yeah. if you had the tutorial it. turned on, okay. We'll go ahead and go with the tutorial then. Yeah, let's see what it does. Okay. For the secrets of the game. It's recommended you complete the mission from first to last. All right, I'm good for that. I just want to learn how to interface with the game and get comfortable with that. So, training resupply. Click on him and start a conversation. Click on this box. What do you need, sir? Oh, this poor bastard. He lost an eye. Take a look. And it's funny because no matter what port you go to, you got the same guy following <laughs> you around the world. <laughs> That's part of the job, man. You got to have that look. Nobody's going to come in and mess with you. All right, so I've got a bunch of stuff here. Let's see what it tells me. On the left side is the stuff I can get out of port. And on the right side, my current budget. Oh, that's my, oh, no. that's my right marks. And on the right side, is that's my inventory. Okay. Track from one wind to the other. Piece of cake. So what do I want, John? Food? Looks like they're telling me I want food. About at least 30 units of food. Okay, well, we all like potatoes. Yeah, I think so. For this first tutorial, they kind of dictate what you do and don't buy. So, everybody, you got to give them something to peel. I just want to buy a thousand potatoes. I just want to buy 20. Let's 
Well, you only have 39, and you only you only have 39 there in port. So if you I think you can type in there and manually put 39. Okay. Let's see if it let me do that. Zero of 20. All right, and then maybe get some cheese or something. There you go. That's bacon wrapped jalapeno. I <laughs> can't beat that. All right, to ensure we have enough. Complete the mission and turn to port. Click the highlighted tab. Right. Oh, there it is. Fuel. So how much do I need? I just need to refuel. Yep. That's, that's good in the merits. That's how much I have. So that's... That. Yes, well, that slider, if you slide it across, it shows the top on your fuel tank. There, right. that's how much you have. So on. just slide the bar across a little bit and hit refuel. Roger that. We go now hit refuel and it should add quite a bit now we're, you know this is the same routine you're going to go through pretty much before every every uh cruise you got to buy and then once you're now to buy three torpedoes now i'll tell you if you take a look at the budget there type two torpedoes mm -hmm. are free they're free okay uh, so i need to zero of them then yeah, the the type ones, you know, they have the selectable speeds, but they cost you two hundred budget. I don't mind type two for trading anyway. Okay, well, it's a process; it takes time. I bet it does. As long as I'm the captain, I don't have to do this. So, click the button to skip the wait. There's the button. Okay, yeah, up on the top right. Here. Mission completed. Okay, what's next? I can look at the U-boat. It is pretty. Man, the graphics are amazing. Yeah, your AWSD keys will move you around. Or you can probably, I have my side scrolling turned off. You can side scroll with the mouse. Um, Spacebar pauses it. Beautiful. You even got a nice effect when you pause it. Okay, so are we ready to head to sea? I think so. Um, if you'll go to your commanding officer there by the gangway. Okay, with a little speech bubble. Admiralty okay. is deeply yep. impressed by your last patrol. And you'll just talk to Sorry, him and he'll give you some orders. Okay. Are there any orders? Opens up the assignment desk. I like the sound of These that. These are current orders from headquarters. Your eyes only. Yeah, this is yeah that's nice. what you want. Okay, patrol sector... We'll just go with the first one. We'll select it. Let's see what it's telling me on the side here. First patrol objectives. Okay. Get a reward. All right. So each one of these has different difficulties. So we'll just start out with that first one. Okay. And to leave the port, in your top right-hand corner, you've got your engine order telegraph icon. If you click that, it'll bring the engine order telegraph up. Okay. So that's your rudder, depth meter, and telegraph. So you'll actually select the diesel engines there and give it a head slow. We're slowing down. Here we go. And it will. Now it takes just a second for the guy to walk over there and throw the thing into gear or whatever. So it does simulate that. That's nice. It's not instantaneous. Yeah. Good looking boat. It's a great looking boat. Man, this game is nice looking. And I mean, this is like. Side 105, just where it left off. Okay. Yeah, if you look, the the ports are pretty abandoned at the moment. Now, you do have some road traffic and some civilians walking around here and there, but I think with the subsequent, you know, versions of this, they're going to start adding in, you know, German merchant ships and warships and whatnot. That's fair enough. This is really nice. Okay, so now if I want to go ahead and... Uh, if you want to time compress, I think is what you're wanting to do. If you, uh, on the top left, you've only got a couple of time compression options because you're real close to, to land. Okay. And, and it doesn't want you to, like, crash your boat into anything. So just go up there and hit, like, 12 or 48. Okay. Speed you along a little bit. You're going to go up here through the lock. And the interesting thing about this is the game actually simulates high and low tide. So when you go into this lock, the water level will adjust. Okay. The from lock what's is straight ahead in of port. Me, John? Yep, and 
what you've done, if you go to the top right to the globe, yeah. and you just throw the thing into gear in your engine order telegraph and start moving, it automatically plots a course out of port. Okay. So your your helmsman is following a predetermined course to get you out of port. Okay. So if you click on that and zoom in, he's at least plotted you a course out there to what used to be in GWX, that giant minefield. Yep. I still, to this day, no matter what subsim I'm playing, I steer wide around that. <laughs> yep. It's conditioned into you. Now I want to go straight ahead. That's the lock ahead of me, right? And they'll open it. Yep, so your helmsman's going to automatically get you out to sea here. Okay, so all I have to do is just don't touch anything and ride along, right? Yep, you're, you're just enjoying the view at this point. Ah, I see it. Doors just open for me. And it, it'll be that one straight ahead. See, it'll open up. Gotcha. It'll automatically stop the engine order telegraph, too. Okay, that's nice. That's nice that I don't have to micromanage these small details. Yeah. Got the power. There's, there's enough, enough in these to micromanage. Yeah. Okay, so we're out to sea, and he's going to continue to make my course changes. So now if you go back to the if you go back up to that globe, that'll put you on your navigational chart. Right. In the top right hand corner. And you can finish plotting your course out, you know, old silent old school silent hunter three style. So if you hold the shift key, if you zoom out a little bit, yeah. And you hold the shift key and uh I believe it's right click, it'll set your next waypoint. Okay. Where you want where you want that to be. So you don't have to really click on anything, just hold shift and where you want to drag it out to. Set a course to these coordinates. Okay, I'm doing that now. Now I'm headed towards my uh, assigned target area on the east coast of England. Yeah, and I'll usually get in there and just, there's no predetermined search patterns like we are used to, so I usually just kind of make one up. Okay, well, this is and, pretty uh, cool. And get in there and cruise around. When I play the tutorial, I, the first couple times I played it, because this game came out right after Wolfpack came out, and I was crunched for time. I was working for air gas, putting in 70-hour work weeks, and I tried to get into this game, but I stalled out a couple times just on the tutorial, and I never invested the time to find out you know, what I needed to do to make it work. So in the back of my mind, there's always been this, one of these days you're going to get some time, and you're going to go ahead and get back in the U-boat. And, uh, yeah, I think part of the big early learning curve for people is the user interface. You know, it's, it's a little bit different than what we're used to in a lot of subsims. It's not bad. It's just I wasn't used to it. All right, so I see my little sub moving along here. I can go up to 1800X. Yeah, yeah once we get well clear land, it'll open up all the way to 6500. But in, in typically shallow waters, it takes those faster time compressions away from you. Okay, so then this is telling me I have a radio message. And we are at war. We are ready to fire. Okay. Hans works in the radio room. West. The music. Leave the station. Okay, leave the station. Now, I'm obviously, when you get to this point, you'll see that I've switched to first person view. And I can walk around in well, the sub, right? Yes, you can with this character. So when you clicked on leave station, that meant that you wanted that particular character to, uh, you know, abandon that post, essentially. Oh, so okay. um, y you can take this time to explore the interior of the U-boat. You know, you got, uh, what's his name up there? Heating up a torpedo. Um, this is obviously, you know what this is, just on our shack. And yeah. So he'll out of our way you can just go right through that hatch see now a sailor has just taken your place because no they don't want to leave it that's pretty cool unmanned yeah okay. and i'll show you something that i didn't understand it's got it maybe it's an easter egg if you go back to the captain's bunk yes sir going back to the captain's bunk now maybe it'll take you a second to see it actually i'm doing the shuffle here we go back to the captain's bunk yeah if you look to the left there, at the foot of the captain's bed on the wall, I have to step back around that curtain. There's a cat. There's a picture of a cat and a captain's hat. I, I, I think I've seen that picture somewhere before, but I don't, uh, maybe not. Yeah, that is totally pre post millennial, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, for sure. 
Well, they've done a really nice job of this boat. It's got a great feel to it, too. All right. Yeah, well, when you order your crash dives, the guys will run through there, you know, just like we expect. Yeah. You've got, you know, pictures room. of pictures of family members and whatnot. Uh, and all the... Yep. All right, what are we doing here? Climb up. He can really climb. And we're on the bridge. And I need to have a taller guy. There we go, step on the step. Oh, that's fantastic. Fantastic. Got my lookouts posted. Got my, yeah. What is this guy? He's the first officer, or what is he? He is the... That's the uh, captain. That's the captain, okay. Yeah, so you can... A unique thing about U-boat is you can sort of occupy the body of any officer aboard the boat. Okay, what's the uh, right click, um, left click? Uh, the way you can do that is if you mouse wheel out. Okay. That's going to bring you back to that uh, section view. It, sh it should. Yeah. Okay, yeah, there you go. So down on the bottom right, you can cycle through these officers and each ah, of their icons if you... Yep, yeah, see there? So you're going to spend a lot of time playing U-Boat, especially in a damage control scenario, in this section view. Yeah. And if you use the A and D keys, or uh, you may be able to edge scroll on your, depending on what your settings are, you can go all the way to the bow, all the way to the stern, and, and see what's going on okay. anywhere in your boat. I am, I am side scrolling now, looking at all my dudes laying in their beds, side scrolling back. Man, that must have been a heck of a challenge to get all this put together to where all the, you know, the sides disappear. Yeah. There's the cook. Although, for some reason, I got the feeling that the, uh, yeah, the, uh, the pantry, the galleon, this, this boat is opposite from the galleon wolf pack. Everything's exactly mirrored the other way. I can't swear to you which is right, but it looks different. There's Weber. He's my, uh, chief mechanic. Look at those diesels. Yeah. And if you mouse wheel, you can zoom way in there. Now, if you uh, if you go too far, you're gonna it's gonna put you in the first person view of the whatever officer you have selected. Now, your row of officers down here, each one of their frames has a little uh, like a it's almost like an Apple map pinpoint in the top left corner of their frame. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, Apple map. You know, like the uh, Google Maps pin. Is it a little? So round, I you, see a little round red icon. Yeah, you see the little uh, like cover over your commander. Okay, hang on, I gotta get back to it. I just made a detour. Okay, my commander has binoculars, it's got a little crosshair, and it's got a little round red icon in the top right corner with a zero in it. Yep, so when you hover over him, you open up some options there on the left side of his of his. I see it, yeah. Plus frame. Right. A bed. Yep, so um, plus and the minus adds sailors to assist him. So right now, if you, these, the binoculars tell you that he's on watch. Okay. So he's he's up on deck and he's on watch duty. So if you want sailors to assist him with watch, you can add two watchmen. So there's a couple of ways to do this. You can click the plus sign twice and that'll give him two sailors to assist, or you yeah. can hover over those boxes those green boxes and add them that way whichever way is easier yeah now just right almost where your mouse is there's that little app pin looking thing just to the right of the plus sign oh, you almost can't even see it yeah. if you if you click on that it's going to take you to that officer wherever he is on the boat okay. talking about that right there And it'll do that with any one of those officers. And so if you assign him, uh, this is an interesting thing, if you go to your map view in the top right hand corner. The globe? Oh, yeah, the globe. Okay, got it. 
and it'll show you your sight range. This is how far your watch crew, you know, how far out there, basically, if you zoom in on your sub there. This is kind of how far they can see. Okay, so that's their limit of uh, clear visibility. Uh, yes, yeah, so if you assign sight. him two sailors. It increases that? It will increase that and make them more vigilant. So when I get into, you know, territory where I'm thinking well, we're probably getting close to a convoy or there may be airplanes in this area that are going to try to attack us, I will make sure that he is staffed with a couple of sailors to help him out. Okay, so I need to play that go Go ahead. That that goes for any of these officers. So what are, whatever job they're performing, they perform mo more efficiently the more sailors you give them. Okay, so now I want to click on the little green box. There's two of them. That just gives me a pop-up that says assign sailors. There are none, so I need to click on the plus sign, correct? Those two boxes are highlighted green, which means you have assigned him two sailors. Oh, I have, so they're highlighted. That means that's it. Okay. I was thinking I yeah. see little faces pop up there, but that's better. That makes more sense. So I do have two guys there, and I click on this. Now you'll notice a couple of these guys down here. These officers have the sh the very light green, and some of them will have like a light gray. That yeah. tells you how many how many sailors you can assign them at that time. So I mean, you've got one guy. He's asleep in his bunk. So he doesn't need any help out. sleeping. Yeah. He need help sleeping, despite what he right. may say. Yeah, and the other guy's on the radio, so he really can't use more than one guy helping him. Right. He'll decode messages faster. He'll receive and track messages faster if he's got an assistant. Your okay. hydrophone operator. You know, when you get to a point where you can get seven officers on the boat on the board uh, on board the boat, this gets easier because you're spreading the workload out. But like if you if you add officers to your uh, hydrophone operator his listening distance in increases so they're all affected in some way um, if you go up on the engine order telegraph if I go up on the just to the order telegraph right here okay uh, yeah up at the top right hand corner of the screen there's the there's the all stop we don't want to click that but just to the left of all stop there's the alarm so if you click alarm, it's going to put the crew into that alarm mode. Okay. Should I do that? Yeah, go ahead. I'll show you some things on there. Okay. Alarm. Take your positions. Everybody to battle stations. Even the, the engine telegraphs turned red. I love it. Okay. So some of your icons have changed. You're... Your commanding officer is still on watch, your radio guy is still on the radio, but your, I guess he's your, one of your engineers there in the center, he's got that gear with the magnifying glass. Okay. That means he's on damage control. Okay. Um, so if you hit his little app pin, and it'll, his camera pin, it'll zoom in on him specifically. Okay. Wherever he is on the boat. It looks like he's in the uh, control and, room. Yep, so that's where he will be, but if you add sailors to him, it'll get a couple of sailors, and what they will do is they will troll up and down the compartments of the boat, checking it for damage. Okay. So, like, if you are if you just attacked a convoy, and now the destroyers are on the hunt, and you're getting pinged, you, you definitely want to have your alarm on. And you want to have these guys roaming around. See, there he is. He's standing there in the torpedo compartment with that clipboard. There's probably another one in there in the galley there. And they'll go from compartment to car compartment and basically inspect. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It, what that does is if you take damage, they're able to respond to it faster this way. Another advantage to being in the alarm mode is your... Your crew, no matter how tired they get, they will stay on duty. So you don't have to worry about until, them coming off duty when you need them. Yeah, until you turn the alarm off, which to turn it off, you just go up there and hit alarm again. Now, what's the downside of keeping them on alert status? They eventually get fatigued? 
Yeah, they'll eventually get fatigued. They won't leave their station fatigued, but if you let them get too fatigued, what's going to end up happening when you come out of alarm mode? They're going to need a very long time to rest and recuperate. So they'll climb into their rack and just kind of odd off for a whole day. Right. And you might, you, you'll potentially be without one of your officers that you might need for right. a while. Oh. So it's, uh, anyway, that's kind of how the alarm mode works. So we'll disable that. Okay, we're trying to uh, we'll get out of here, scroll. This is the alarm mode, turn it off by clicking it. Yeah, on the engine order telegraph, just turn oh, it off by clicking the... Click it again, huh? Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. So that was the indicator it was on. It was right here. Mm hmm okay. Sorry, everything's so... And if you've today. got... Uh, yeah, it's okay. If you've got uh, sailors that were assigned to that guy, for example, now they're grayed out on him, and you'll need to release them from duty because they don't have anything to assist him with. Okay, so that's him. So hit the minus sign... Yep. Here we go. Perfect. All right. Now let's look up here. This is just uh, indication only. Battery capacity is that correct? Fuel capacity is the indication. Yep. So you. Air quality. Yep. And discipline. These are nothing that I can do anything about. Well, the faster you run your, the faster you run your engines, obviously you're going to run out of fuel or battery, depending on if you're running surfaced or submerged faster. Uh, discipline is mainly going to be impacted by, you know, whether you're under attack or under an alarm mode for a long period of time. Okay, so then I have my engine telegraph. I have my depth meter. Does that also control diving and surfacing? Yes. And I have icons for surface the ship, decks of wash, periscope. So there's a crash dive. A lot. There's a lot you can do here. So the uh, you can select your depth just you know a la Silent Hunter two or three just by clicking a depth you want to go to. Right. And it'll it'll dive right down to it. Okay. Um, or you can order them to periscope depth or to crash dive or to now when you hit crash dive it accounts for the depth of the sea there. So, it'll dive down to 150 meters if you've got, you know, if you're in deep water. But if you're if you're only 80 meters deep, it won't go deeper than that in crash dive. So we're not we don't have like we've trained Bernard out of the situation. <laughs> we're not going to go diving into the seafloor. The hydrophone check. Up. Yep. Hydrophone check just dives you down, stops the engines, does a hydrophone check for like 30 minutes, and then comes back up. Okay, now I've kind of detoured. Whoa. Let me get back to where I was here. I've detoured slightly. I'm looking at my Echo Ranger. Now it's got a gear icon to it. I would assume if I clicked it, that would do something. And when I click it, I get a little indication pointing down. Do I have any information? Have I, have I, have I done a sounding now? Bottom, nope, over so you want to... You'll want to right-click that. And okay. uh, the way you're doing it right now is your captain's going to go over there and run it, and it'll tell you what the depth is. And it tells me at the bottom left side of the screen. It'll tell you. It should tell you right over the echo lot. Okay. So he'll ping shallow there, and then it'll tell you. Thirty-five meters, right? Yep. Okay. Does it keep that information on this left side, or is there like a message window that? You can scroll up now and see what the last messages are. Um, in a way, but I'll tell you, I don't get a lot of use out of that echo lot because here's why. If you go to your map view, anywhere you hover your mouse icon, it's going to tell you the depth of the water there. Okay. Let's see here. In the top right-hand corner, it gives you, you know, you've got four hours at sea. It's a 19-kilometer-per-hour wind. Oh, I see it. I see it. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Yeah. So the depth right here is about 35 meters, just like the Echo Ranger showed me. Yeah. Okay. Good, good, good. Now, uh, this is the one you're saying this will basically uh, set you up for listening. Kind of a shortcut for all this. Yes. 
the things that need to be done. Yeah, you don't you don't have to go through all the rigmarole. You can just click that, and the crew will do automatically what they need to do to give you a sound check. I like that. I like that. Okay, so there is my depth meter. What is this one here? My rudder. So this is my compass. Nope, this is my rudder. Why has it got a left rudder on? Yep, you and turn. Yeah, you're coming up, uh, coming up on a waypoint there. I see. And that will, it'll vary, of course, with the current and everything, surface waves and whatnot. Okay, and then the, um, the map that allows me to make course changes. Is there like a compass rose you can click on and set course changes that you know of? So that was, that's one of the big complaints currently is there is not compass navigation. There is a compass navigation mod which works perfectly and it just what it'll allow you to do is basically I think it switches that uh, rudder steering indicator between the rudder mode and compass mode perfect perfect yeah I'll have to check yeah. that out then definitely what is this telling me coordinates depth wind speed hours at sea okay all right so then I think I've got a feel for some of this this is a lot better than the last time what's this little anchor telling me here a port for resupply, no U-boat flotilla is okay, cool. All right, so unless you have any other things you want to point out, I'm going to zoom on over to my patrol area. Yeah, let's go see if we can find somebody to Harass. sink. Yeah. Okay, it's saving. So it does save the game, and it gives me a radio message. Oh, no, not France. I didn't want to go against France again. Where am I going to get my cheese? Uh -huh. Self-defense is allowed, but we can't. We can't attack them. Okay, well, that's cool. Now it seems to me that the game recognizes certain prize rules because, you know, obviously you don't want to sink a neutral ship. But I think the prize regulation said that if it was a neutral ship sailing in convoy with, you know, and it was clearly engaged in belligerent activities, so. I've sank neutral ships that were armed and in neutral convoy or, or in uh, enemy convoys, and it yeah. did not take any points off for the sinking. Whereas if that ship had been sailing by itself, it would have dinged me. Huh. If it's in a convoy with belligerents, I can understand why you could be forgiven that. Yeah. Okay, so this is a radio message telling me in this area they said there's a tiny group. That means a few ships. Yeah, so you, 1165, if you go to your mail icon over there, it's, he's probably message, sent you a radio message saying that he spotted some ships. So it's kind of like, you know, you get the old convoy reports or it may be a single merchant. Okay, so... And you don't have to respond to these. You know, it's right. just, uh, but they are accurate. You know, you can intercept, if they report a ship there, it's not just for, you know, it's not just for immersion. It's, there's actually a ship there. Um, so how do we get our budget points is one, one question that will come up. And sinking ships obviously get you a certain amount of budget. Um, reporting sightings get you a certain amount of budget so okay. like when you when you reach your patrol area just to the left of the engine order telegraph it's going to give you the option to report to BDU that you have reached your assigned area and that's going to allow you to I think it's 250 uh, 350 so you'll click on where it says patrol sector reached your yeah. radio man will send that message and it gave you $350 for making it okay Remind me again where my points are, where I can see them. Right above where your mouse is, you got 5,901 ah, budget. And I see it. Okay. You don't have the greatest reputation in the Kriegsmarine yet. <laughs> That's all right. I'm just getting started. I haven't sunk anything yet. All right. So now this consists of me, just like in the Side of Hunter game, in a career game, basically you just lock the time compression on the max and you wait for something to pop up. And you get yep, and you can do that. Yeah, you can do that on the surface. Uh, you can do periodic sound checks. You can rely on some of the reports from other boats to come in. And, you know, usually they'll send you a report. They're not able to catch them or they're out of torpedoes. And 
you know, it's just kind of low-hanging fruit, really. What's the... Oh, turn it off. There we go. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, now, let me try to practice this a little bit. Got that. This, I want to do a sound check. 50 meters. In real time, because I really like watching this stuff. It never gets old, brother. They all went down below, except the captain. He's still waiting. And now he's going down below. I think that's all of them. Nope, oh, there's one more guy. Yeah, they just wait for the ladder to get clear. That's awesome. It's so much better than if they just all pop, disappear, you know? Every little thing like this adds up. Switch oh, there we go. Now oh, I can see the boat under the water. That's beautiful. So now we're going to go to 50 meters, obviously, and they'll do a sound check. And will the, uh, do I need to click on the sonar man to get a feedback, or would he report to me? Uh, he'll report it, and the best way to see his report is in the map view. Okay. Um, and I'll tell you, a, a good management tip on your boat is the tab key. I haven't mentioned that yet, but if you press and hold tab, it's going to bring up a whole host of things that you can do from this little tab screen quickly. So like on your left, your gyrus compass is highlighted green. Yeah. That means it's on and it's running. So any of those devices make noise, right? Okay. So your gyroscope, your gyroscopic compass is making noise right now. So if if you turn it off, it's going to be easier for you to get lost over time. Exactly. Um, so you want to be running with it on pretty much all the time. But if you're if you're in a situation where you're being hunted, that's just one more thing for the enemy to pick up on their hydrophones. So we'll turn that off. For your lighting at night, if this is kind of cool, if you're in first-person perspective, you turn your red lighting on, it will actually adjust the gamma of your monitor so you can see better in the dark. I love that. <laughs> uh, the blue lighting is basically silent running. It'll reduce the oxygen consumption of the crew, prolong the air aboard the boat, and it reduces the sound signature of your sub. And in your... Uh, under your orders, your dive planes are currently set to electric. I mean, if you're really taking a pounding down deep in the water and the depth charges are coming, you can switch those from electric to manual, so yeah. it'll shut down the electro-hydraulic drive for the dive planes, so it's one less thing for them to be able to hear you. Now, let me make sure I understand correctly. The lighting, three options for lighting, normal, red, and blue. Switching to blue lighting also shifts the... Uh, combat mode in the silent running that's correct so it reduces the crew noise there by 75 percent and your oxygen usage reduces by 15. Okay, so it's not just to change the lighting it also uh alters the game it's like me ordering silent running and then the uh, red lighting will actually change the screens for me oh i love that I can't yeah it'll actually yeah it'll brighten or darken up the screen and uh, at night, your AI characters, your you know, your uh, non-player characters, can see further at night. Yeah. All right. Beautiful. So, so there's a mod where you can where it'll automatically switch between red and and white depending on if it's day or night. I use that mod because I just don't like going in there and switching to red because we go through days and nights so fast on time compression. Got gotcha. you. Now, these are all options that this officer can perform. He can perform some maintenance, three targets, meaning he has three things he can do, which look like they're torpedoes. Yep, uh, he can maintain or preheat those torpedoes prior to an engagement, so it reduces the odds of having a dud. Yeah. Um, Man, this you is can so send him depth. to rest. Yeah, if you go to improve depth keeping, it will actually, and only an engineer rating, uh, rated officer can do that. So if you go to imp improve depth keeping, he'll actually manage the helmsman or the planesman. And uh, they will, their depth will be, their control of their depth will be tighter. Okay. You no, know, they won't wander around so much as far as depth goes. All right. So that's the tab key. Normal lighting, red lighting, and blue lighting. And then alarm is battle stations. 
that puts everybody on alert on their stations? Yes, and it, when they sight or detect an enemy, it will automatically alarm. What is stop direct orders? Uh, that's new in this last release, and I have not messed with that. Maybe if you hover over it, it'll tell you. It doesn't, doesn't appear to you. I'm hovering now. Oh. Okay, now let me see. Down at the bottom, I've got three globes. Full map, the world situation in one. Then I've got the world map again and tactical map. Let's take a look at the tactical map. What am I looking at here? Scrolling back. Okay, let me do it again. So the tactical map. There's the world. And map. these these are just going to be the various levels of zoom. Okay. Yeah, which of course you can mouse wheel in and out. Okay. For the same effect. I find that it's easier to use the map wheel. No, on the top right hand corner under menu, you'll, you'll click center view. It'll yes, come sir. down to your ship. Okay. You're an excellent teacher, John. All right. the, I, did, uh, I did see a little dude popping up here. Was he my telling me my sound checks? It doesn't appear there's anything that's been detected. Because it would show up on the map. So... Okay. Sounds like you've got an empty C right now. Okay, let me see if this guy pops up again. Now these menus are not uh, hideable or any of that stuff right there. They're fixed in this position for me. So if you wanted to take like screenshots or video, yeah. if you press the U key, it will hide this entire user interface from Very cool. everybody. Very cool. I'll Just to bring it that. back. I accidentally hit the yeah. U key and then our game's broke. Somebody fix it. Yeah. All right. Yeah, U key will, will, will hide all that. Um, the N key will put you into f camera free mode where you can kind of free camera around all over the place. Let's see. Uh, I'm surfacing the boat. Uh, da -da -da. Telegraph again. Surface the ship. Rudder. This. Budget. Uh, this is my map tools over here. This is telling me my oxygen level. And once I surface, okay, so I'm on the surface now. Let's see. Just about. You, what you can do is you can click that map pin for the any of your officers, and it'll zoom in on it and, and put it on that Switch. external camera view. Like that? Uh, I'm, I'm a little lagged, but... Yeah, I know. It's coming... It's coming. Yeah. So if you mouse wheel out, it'll close the compartment view off, and Go back to normal. You can watch the watch the boat submerge and surface. Okay. Now, what do I do to recharge my batteries? Recharge my air? Is that stuff I need to get the crew to do for me? All right. So that's a that's a good question. So to recharge the batteries, you've got some options. I had to be surfaced and making repairs the other day. So one of the ways you can recharge your batteries is go to your engine order telegraph and the uh, Laden selection I think is how you say that uh, it'll disengage the diesels from the prop shafts and it'll run them both at flank and it'll stop the ship it'll stop the boat and charge the battery in, in one spot or if, if you want to continue to run on the surface all you have to do is switch to your diesel engines by clicking on the diesel motor okay. but it, it appears that's already been done okay. so you're running on diesels now the batteries are, are charging to replenish air if you hold the tab key you yeah. can do this so many different ways so if you hold the tab key you can just go over to your devices and turn on the diesel compressor or the electric compressor or both uh, if you run both it'll recharge your air flasks faster Okay, now I have the tab key pulled up, and um, I see electric compressor, it's got an X, diesel compressor has an X. Yep, so it's currently off, so it's it's put those two sailors' icons, so they're presently walking across the ship to go oh, manually it's not turn them off. you're right, you're right. Oh, right. that's amazing. Yeah. So I need to keep my uh, shirt on, not to get in too big a hurry. Ventilation, so I click that, and I see yep. a sailor next to it, and there it is. Okay, so I see my... Now the ventilation... 
Yeah, you're you're ventilating the boat just by being on the surface. So th what the ventilation is doing, if you can zoom in uh, with your free ca or with your camera there on the compartment view for the diesel engines, uh, just go to the diesel compartment. Give me a second to get caught up. All right, and the you see that kind of gear it's showing you a click spot just for just forward of the uh, diesel near the ceiling yep, that's your right. ventilator yep. what you need to do with that is right now it's disabled and it's not doing anything but if you go to the galley and you click on your little storage icon in the galley you can actually put a potassium absorber in there and while you are submerged you can turn that on and it will act as an air scrubber so if you click on down there, that little box on the yeah, bottom. I, see, I got you. Right, so I got a storage room, and I got Kurt Hoffman in his bag. So you want to take three of those potassium sheets. They look like little stu steel oh, plates. Drag them over to... Uh, to if what? you click on the ventilation, on the far right, click on ventilation. Yeah, I see. And it. then drag them into the blank uh, spot. Okay. And it'll ask you how many. I caution people against putting all 20 in there because if you leave your ventilator on and forget about it, it's going to consume all 20 of them. So I usually go in there and just slide that slider to like two or three. So just enough to get my oxygen them. back up. Yeah, that way if I forget and leave it on, I've only lost three potassium absorbers. But you only have to use this now if you're trapped in deep water by a prolonged depth charging and your air is running out and surfacing is not an option. And you've put this thing on the seabed and you're trying to get away from these destroyers. You see what I'm saying? You can put that in there and it'll it'll air scrub the boat. Gotcha. So now I exit, I'm exiting the screen. Okay. So they really could let you shoot the cook, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, for like burning scrambled eggs. Now, you'll find guys on duty that are like taking a nap in the corner of the diesel room or whatever, and you can levy out discipline. And one of the disciplines is to clean the head, and he will physically go in there and get down on his hands and knees and scrub the toilet. <laughs> wow. All right. Getting a good feel for this game like I never had before. So now I really want to go ahead and move into the engagement phase and get a feel for that. Oh, there's a group behind me now. Should I turn around? Steamer in Naval Square, AN 493, 13 knots, 176. Two duds, one miss, couldn't continue attack. Ah, oh, you poor bastard. Maybe I can. So if you just hit the X, it'll get you out of this message. You don't have to... Okay. All right. Is it, yeah. I'll do it next time. Because if you hit leave station, that that guy is going to leave the station. Okay. So it's kind of time. misleading. Or okay. Do I want to go? Uh, yeah, or confirm. To him? If you click on that, if you right click on that, it should set an intercept course automatically. Beautiful. All right. All ahead. Flank. I th let me see here. What do we got here? Haba fought. Girls fought. Ob fought. I'm assuming faster, that. Faster. Flank. So you've only you've only got to see how those are grayed out. You've yeah. only got a, a, half a head. <clears throat> you've only got you know a head standard down. basically. So if you pull up your tab key yep. and send one of your engineers to the diesel room, manage the diesel engine. Okay, let me see here. Let me see here. One of my engineers manage diesel engines. Click it and wait. Yep, and he'll run back there. And it will open up the higher speed if you give him a sailor to assist it will open up flank speed now that's a little unrealistic in my opinion flank speeds always going to be available sure like no matter who you've got manning the thing but i guess that's their way of representing that if you're running the diesels wide open you need more people in there to check stuff to make sure you don't wreck them yeah probably all right, so, so if you go. add if you go down to your diesel guy and add a sailor to his to his work party you can go considerably faster okay you're right faster faster now we're going faster faster I'm gonna just zoom right over there it'll stop me in time for uh time compression will automatically stop I won't be right on top of somebody right 
you have that danger. Yeah, uh, and it didn't it intercept. Really happen? So, yeah, you can hit, hit the space bar once you start feeling like you're getting close, but we've missed them. Oh, we have? Okay, I'm yeah. Gonna go to, I'm going to go down and Switch listen. Skipper, I've detected a ship. See, there he is. He popped up. Where'd he go? Come back. What did he tell me? Let's see. Reporting something. He heard propellers at a yeah, distance. Yeah, he's... He's yeah. got a propeller noise to the north, so I think they were north down. So if you just if you head for him, you're gonna go right up the tail. Set a course for these coordinates. Okay, let's yes, see sir. here. Surface Pull the boat. The John, you know that feeling you get when you start figuring out how things work and you're starting to the the actual working of the game is behind you and you're starting to experience the game. That is a lot of fun, isn't it? Yeah, that's when the enjoyment really starts because it's, you know, anytime you jump into a new game, it's kind of a pain in the rear to learn it. Yeah. It's especially if it's vastly different from what you're used to in a subsim. And uh, U-Boat is certainly no exception. Tiny group once you start, you know, if you, fly, if, you, if you do a couple of sailings and you figure out, kind of figure out the nuance of the user interface. Yeah. All right. Okay, so now we've got something happening here. Uh, first thing I want to do is let's see if I can go on. It's the gonna boat. be disappointing if that's another U-boat. Ah, uh, I'll sink him. Let's see here. Here, we go, here we go. Here we go. All right. Captain, so can I make a suggestion? Command. Yes, sir. If you I'm get sleeping. your commanding, get your commanding officer. If you press the tab key. Tab key. Yep. Send him t on watch. It will increase your sight range, and you'll probably spot that ship. Okay, get up, Neil, you lazy bastard. Put him on observation. Yeah. There he goes. Well, you can see that they put a lot of care into this. There's so many shortcuts they could have taken. Gotta see how to do this again. This is what he sees here, right? Now I need to move this. Looks like. Is there a zoom key? What's the zoom key? Right click? Uh, yeah, mouse. Right mouse click. So if you zoom in on that ship, you can get an idea of if it looks like it might be heading south. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, we're at sunset, so it's daylight, so he's gonna see you if you get too close. Okay. So, I need to so get we'll go to the. Yeah, we'll go to, and that's a Norwegian steamer, but uh, I guess it doesn't matter. We can still sink it. But uh, if you go to your map view, you can kind of a la Silent Hunter Three plan your approach that way. Okay. Back, back, that makes back. sense. Yep, yep, yep. So I can uh, set up my. Let's see here. Shift key. No. How do you how do you get rid of that waypoint? Just use your right click to click anywhere to set a new waypoint. A not with not with shift. Oh. Ah, there we go. Change course. Perfect. So now we're gonna start spinning the boat around. Now if he sees me, will he try to evade? Being a neutral, I don't think he will. Okay. He might report your position to the Royal Navy. <laughs> oh, that's not very nice of him. No, I have to see no. for sure. Now, why is this black? Because it's nighttime? Yes, so the map, the map will... Uh, yeah, it's getting close to dark. If you hold your tab key and switch to red light, I bet that on the map, while you're on the map view, I think your sight, you'll see your sight range increase. But it's still kind of light out. So you can get 150 budget for reporting that ship sighting to be to you. Okay, did I report it yet? If you click on where it says ship spotted, click to send a report up there by the telegraph. There we go. A lot of these neutrals, you can actually send a boarding party and inspect their cargo hold and see what they're carrying. You know, for example, if this was a neutral, but he's full of ammunition. Yeah. He's legal gay. Yep. War's over for those guys. You, you even have options then. You can send all your guys back to the sub and torpedo them, duck gun them. If one of your one of your uh, boarding party is uh, has explosives, 
capability. Yeah. You can just set scuttling charges and save yourself the ammunition. That I think he might be zigzagging. That is something we've never seen in this. Yeah, that's completely new to uh, completely new to a subsim. Like that's unheard of. That's something I always read about in the books. But uh, the fastest way to move the scope around is the arrow keys. Be the WASD. The uh, WASD, yep. Yeah. And if you hold shift, it will move quicker. Yeah, there we go. At the top of this. So this is your UZO, obviously, but at the top you've got the center arrows icon, and that will automatically center the view on north. Bring it back on north. It. Okay, what's the circle for color filter? Yep. Wow. So you can put a red right filter for night, yeah. So this guy's probably like on a 50 or 60 degree bearing. Is it doing? It's asking if I want to invoke the sticky oh, keys. Oh, sticky keys. Yeah, if you tap shift or if you hold it for longer than five seconds, I think Windows so thinks that you're trying to. Yeah. I think I've lost him. Has he evaded me? Got me. He might be. I think he's further even past there, maybe about 90 or 100. Oh, he's you're probably right, behind. You're right, you're right. He's hiding behind that uh, radio mast. Yeah, almost. <laughs> Cool. So he's he's coming on. So now let's see here. Uh, escape key gets me out of all that and bring us to periscope. Yeah, or you can mouse wheel yeah. back. Just mouse wheel back out of it. Okay. There you go. All right. I'm going to periscope depth and I'm gonna find out where I am. There I am on the map. I'm going to go ahead and change course. course no point in trying to set up a forward course. Let me change my speed to flying fart. We're slowing down. We're slowing down. Now your watch officer will automatically man the attack scope. Switch okay. to electric motors. Electric engines. This looks like it's going to be a long shot. Oh, I'm just going to sit and wait for him to get closer. I'll speed it up a little bit. There we go. Now, this is where I would normally figure this out the hard way, but uh, let's see here. What is he doing? He's looking through the periscope. That's what I want him to do. Well, that's a cool looking periscope, too. This guy should be in front of me somewhere, pretty close. There he is. So lower it down. All right, John. There's my Pappenberg gauge. Uh, what is this? What is this? Identification book. Let's see my zoom. Okay, so now if I want to, he's a freighter, and that's him <coughs> right there. Nope, nope, that's not him. So this gives me a different page each time. Uh oh, I got into the warships. How did I do that? What is At this? the top there. Yeah. If you see that little periscope icon at the top of the screen. Yeah, yeah, I see it. View mode. That much yeah, that's your view mode. I use the widest angle mode at the that's at the bottom three. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see your point. So you'll set that to uh, freighter on your recognition manual. And okay. then but just put the crosshairs on the the center of your target ship yeah. and click to lock it. Just old school style. Okay, I'm working on it. You get that? Click to lock, click left mouse button. Or E yep. key. And you good. almost have to have the crosshairs like on right, like snipered on him. There you go. Uh, I'm working on it. You can press and hold the E key for a second. Okay, I'm doing that now. Lower your scope a little. Lower it? Yeah, just, uh, no, I mean uh, the aiming point with the S key. Okay, got it. That might make it easier to lock. Like, you almost have to have the crosshairs on him. Okay, I think I see it. Got the crosshair on him now. 
or hitting the E key or holding it down, both. Let's see here. And then click on the ship with your mouse button. Click on the ship with my mouse button. Oh, that yeah. did it. Click on the ship with my mouse button, did it. Yeah. Okay, so that's the uh, that's that part. Now range. This is what I need to use to get the range. Where is it? Mass height twenty one point seven. So I'm still me... catching up. Yeah. There we go. So velocity is usually what we're gonna get first. Okay. Um, uh, you got it on the manual down there. We're gonna recognize the ship. So the the little arrows, bottom left and right. Let's go right because I. Uh, that's not the ship we're looking at. Okay. I'm moving the arrow. If you want to raise raise your periscope a little, that might. So we can't get a velocity. You know, we can't get a velocity until we identify the ship. So that's not the ship. That's not the Empire Bell. So we're going to have to go right arrow. Okay. So we're lagging. I'm going through all. I'm, I'm watching YouTube, so... I see I'm on Liberty ship now, so now which way do I want to go? Uh, we just want to match up the uh, silhouette to what we're looking at. So he's got the center the center uh, island, single stack, fore and aft uh, crane towers, and then the two little, two smaller towers on the rear. So whatever silhouette that matches up to. Okay, so now I've gotten into war class, Q class. Obviously, I am having trouble with this somehow. Corvette, destroyer, cruiser, battleship, fast attack, submarine, fishing boat, and freighter. Now, I'm in freighter, so I use the bottom right and left arrow keys with the recognize uh, in the middle. I use those to go between different freighters. Yes, yeah, so once you've selected freighter from the top menu, you'll use your... your uh small arrows at the bottom there to cycle through each individual silhouette okay and if Perfect. you go too far it'll take you into the next class of vessel but um, what you can do here is if you press the space bar yeah. that'll pause the game so we're not letting this guy swim by while we're trying to figure this out so if you just press the space bar got it that'll pause it so um, it's not the Empire Bell it's not the Empire Explorer it's the Empire Tower class it looks like to me this one okay so if yeah so if you click recognize got it you're now now you can start collecting target data so the way that this target data is going to work if you close your recognition manual and we will hit the little stopwatch for velocity okay all you're going to do is put the crosshairs of the periscope ahead of the ship yeah bow touches it you're going to start your little stopwatch of course you'll have to be on pause to do all that but right. and you're going to stop the watch and click set when the stern of the ship passes the reticle okay so i've got it positioned to the front i'll unpause it and click start and just hold it still and when it gets to the end i'll click set yeah <laughs> Away we go. And I worked so hard to lock it. Okay, it says stop yeah. is the option, so that's what I'll do is stop, right? And when the bow when the stern gets to that crosshair you'll stop it and then that'll switch to a set. Ah, got it. So it's start, stop, set. Okay. 13 kilometers per hour. Now the next point is course, right? Yep, so you've got a couple of options with course. Um, I always just use the angle on bow, which right now you're at about 85 yep. uh, left. Yep. So then but you just you plug have that in yourself. There's, uh, let's see. Yeah if, you left. yeah, if you click the little course icon, you've got a couple of ways to put angle on bow in. There's a little slider at the top of the tool that comes up. You can change it to course mode or angle on bow mode. Okay. I'm angle on bow mode is what we want. Is that what I'm in, or now I'm? No, that's on bow. relative course. Okay, now that, I'm uh, so got red and green showing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll 
go ahead and set that. And now my yep, last thing is range. Yep, so your distance is just this typical statimeter. Okay. Just put the ghost on the top of the mast. And uh, the collected data will go to 100%. And we're ready to fire. And there's a process even for that. Okay, Q um, and E. Q and Oh, wow, this is awesome. Okay, first of all, I need to move my scope up just a little bit. There we go. Now, I'm going to unzoom this dog. And now I want this bottom of the ship to be even with the tallest mast. About right there? That's right. Okay. Okay, and then set. Right. And there is a torpedo data computer mod that is just like what we're used to seeing in the Silent Hunter series that I find is super handy for players who are used to that. Yeah. You can use that instead of this default, you know, vanilla setup. So we'll but it set does the, the same range. functionality? Yes. That's It'll result in, in the same hit. So the torpedo icon, the big tor torpedo icon there to the right of your distance, you know, distance. Yeah. If you click that, it's going to open up your options as far as what tube you're going to send, what speed setting, and I think we've got all type 2s, so we only get one. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open that up. Uh, stern torpedo, no go. Okay, tube 1, tube 2, tube 3, tube 4. So do I click on a tube to select it? Yep, you'll click it, it'll close the hatch, flood the flood tube, tube preferably you'll choose one of the red torpedoes. That means it's preheated and reduces the odds of a dud. Yes, sir. If the torpedo is grayed out, then that's going to mean that it's, you know, it's not a warmed up weapon. So like tube one, we'll select. Um, you can then select the depth of the runner. You can select its speed. I usually go with the highest speed. Okay. And uh, if you if you select more than one torpedo, you can select your dispersion Watch angle of your two. spread. So we'll just send him one. Um, probably about a two meter depth is going to be ideal for a ship like that. I think he's got a pretty steep draft though. Yeah, yeah. about eight something. Okay, yep, so we're so ready to go. I'm sorry, Norway, but this is just how it has to be, my friend. So yep. unpause the game. So We'll unpause and they will uh, flood those that tube there. And when the tube is flooded, the fire button will become clickable. Okay, I see the little blue icon. Fire! Hey man, that is awesome. How do I reload? Your one of your engineers will run up there and do it for you. Uh, do I have to tell him to do it, or he does it automatically? He should do it automatically, and right. if you assign sailors to him, he'll load it faster. All right, let's see if I can figure out how to do that real quick. Get Nope, nope, nope. So if you mouse wheel out of this back to your compartment view. Yeah. Now that'll leave the position, that icon down there in the bottom right, so um, you have to close the... Uh, Torpedoes? Torpedo. Okay, Torpedo gotcha. Loadout. Gotcha. So now I'm in the torpedo bow room. I just closed out the torpedo uh, panel. It'll take a second to catch up. Now, one of these guys down. So the it looks like you're. Room. Yeah, your engineer's in bed. So what you're going to have to do is hit the tab key and bring your engineer up and tell him to reload tube one. Okay. I guess he was sleepy in the middle of the attack. Of course, you're not in alarm because that's a neutral. You know, they're not planning on attacking this, but you're you've gone rogue. Yeah. And you're gonna draw Norway into this thing early. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like to get my name in the history books. Yeah, for sure. Uh, did I hit something? So if you go to if you go to perform maintenance, three targets, uh, or actually, better way to do this is if you just select that engineer officer from the icons down at the bottom. Yeah. Just click on him. Yeah. And then you can go all the way to the bow. Okay. Working on it. Seconds. And you can do all this paused. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's do that pause then because I don't want to miss the glory of sinking my first target. All right. So I click on nod. Yep. So you're going to zoom into compartment view. I'm in the compartment view now. All the way to the forward torpedo room. Uh-huh. I'm in the forward torpedo room. 
bolts. Go forward as far as you can go to your tubes, and there will be a click point there. It says torpedo tubes load out. Okay. Yep, and just drag, a, just drag a torpedo in there, and he will go and handle it. Okay, is your order to carry this to the tube? It is. Move. Come on, quickly. Oh, yeah. He's talking to the people now. Let's see if I can add a couple dudes. All right, I click the plus sign. Oh, he's on the way. That's what that icon, the little green walking guy icon is. Yeah, he's headed for the target, you know, you've assigned him. Oh, I'm paused, too, so nothing's happening when I'm paused. Yeah, right, so you'll so have to... So what's the best way to watch to my uh, torpedo impact? Through the periscope? Through the periscope, which your your officer is there, or you can go to the map view and use your external camera, whatever you want to do. Okay. Let's see if I if you go to the map view, we'll know how... How accurate my shot is? Uh, yeah, we'll know how accurate it is, which I think is probably pretty accurate. Okay, I've done screwed up and lost my periscope. Okay, now I need to look until I can find this guy. And he's probably up close to... Yeah, it looks uh, like you're... Close to zero somewhere. Should be in this ballpark. There he is. Yeah, you... That damn sticky key. I'm going to go in and nuke that later. Okay, yeah. now... Yeah. We can go to the map view, which is... Uh, which is, let's see, okay, from here I click here to go out, and I can scroll out here, go to the map view, and then, how do you see your torpedo? Oh, shoot, look at there. That's the torpedo, right? Yeah, so if you click on the torpedo in the bottom left-hand corner, you, there should be a camera icon, and you it'll focus on that torpedo. Or you can click on the target ship which you're about to get a direct hit nearly yeah or you cool. can click on the target ship and use that camera icon it'll focus on that ship or you can even from the map view zoom, zoom way in and do like a god's eye view all right so you ready john let's see if we did it it's a hit it is a My hit deck is on fire major oh, so hull sweet. damage let's see this gets me out of this view that scrolls me back uh, this will surface the boat. Blow the tanks. This will. I'm going slow. All right, surfacing. Surfacing. Look at there. Low air reserves. Dang. It's 96 percent. I don't call that low. No, and it, it it gives you that. I think it's more of a translation issue, but it it gives you that uh, every time you use compressed air. Yeah, past, like, surfacing. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so I want to get into my captain eyeball. He's on the bridge. Let's see, manual mode. Yeah, there we go. Let's see, we need to go this way, not that way. Now you can actually approach those lifeboats. So in this case, oops, we sank a neutral. You can actually go over to those lifeboats and yeah. disperse food to the survivors. <laughs> Let's try to do that. Or, or take them on board, assuming anybody lived through that glorious hit. Yeah, that's true. All right, let's see. Zoom out, zoom out. What are these telling me? I can't use time compression because I'm too close to something. Okay, so Change course. I'm going to go straight to this guy. Faster, faster. I'm gonna move on over there real quick, and now I'm going to go back to my captain. Oh wow! I think we sank him. There's nothing left. What is that? Lifeboats? Lifeboats. Probably people in them. Women and children. <laughs> no, it's empty. Then nobody got out. Just the lifeboats survived. Unless they're ducking because they're afraid I'm gonna mach machine gun them. Yeah, if, uh, Whoa. I don't see anybody in them. Yep, they're empty. I have a hard time getting used to getting out. Okay, let's see. Press Alt to display UI. That's what I want. There we go. Nope, still not there. Press Tab to open the match. Okay, so when I'm in a view like this. What's the easiest way to get to where I can use my mouse to click on stuff? Instead of being so, in like, when you're in the, uh, when you're in the UZO view, when you're in the first-person view like you were... If you click that exit button on the bottom right, that removes the officer from that device. 
Uh, but I can't so what I do is, go ahead. What I do is I just mouse wheel back. Oh, okay. Repeatedly. Okay. Yeah. I gotta get used to I that. I just mouse wheel back. Uh, that is one of the awkward things that takes a minute to get used to. Okay, I'll get it. I'll get it. All right. What was I doing? I forgot. Oh, I need to do this. Send a message for some points. And there are three interactions nearby. I want to see what those are. And then we'll see if we can find any lifeboats if they're still there. Because I'm moving pretty fast. So I'm not left them behind. Lifeboat, we're moving too fast, moving too fast. We're moving too fast. Okay, so I'm slowing down. In fact, okay, interact with lifeboat. Look at there, John. We're not taking them on board, though. We'll give them a sausage. Let's see, I'm going to give them... If you take them on board, like if you t if you capture, um, like let's say you shoot a an airplane down, yeah, you can you can rescue the uh, pilot from the dinghy, so you'll he'll be a guest aboard, right? So yeah. when you get back to port, there's an option for you to turn him in as a prisoner of war, and you'll get budget and reputation or one or the other or both points for doing that okay. and they've only got one space to hold things so that uh if it's an officer like on a ship so if the captain is aboard the the uh, life raft you can take the captain or an engineer or whatever he will that will offer you more points for taking him back to port as a prisoner versus just a, a, a regular sailor right um, you have that option i don't typically do that, you know, but it's just one more guy to have to keep up with. <laughs> Can't make him do any work, make him clean the toilet. Oh, um, there is a rescue mission, or there's a mission to recover an Enigma machine from a sunken U boat. You have to send a diver down to it, and not to give away any spoilers, but oh, if, don't, assuming don't. they're off. Yeah, assuming there are any survivors from any friendly boats that get sunk, you can rescue them. And while they're aboard, you can put them to work, but you can't put prisoners to work. Okay, now it's, it's giving me a lot of interaction options. I can skip those if I want, or I can do them if I want, correct? Yep, completely up to you. Because I'm not going to get locked out of proceeding because of that. And is there any reason why I would send a diver to a wreck on the seafloor in real life? Probably they never did this, but in the game, is it? Does it make sense? Are you going to get something that you know? You think? Um, you, you might go through all of the hoopla of sending a diver down, and he's like, "Okay, well, I discovered a crate that has um, you know 50 units of potatoes in it." Hmm. Okay. The only, the only thing that that's going to do you any good. Is if you're you've been out at sea a long time and you're almost out of food. <laughs> All right. Well, I, so there's no I, real benefit. I play the game. I usually play these games the way I read the books, and uh, I do not remember Preen or Kretschmer or any of them sending divers down to get potatoes. So I would probably joyfully skip that part. But the interception, yeah. the uh, the TDC. I'm going to definitely look up that mod for the TDC. Uh, yeah, I've got uh, five or six mods that I, I highly recommend, and the TDC mod is definitely one of them. Now, uh, one of the annoying things that a lot of people have griped about it on U-Boat is the engine order telegraph. You know, anytime you click on something, he's telling you faster, faster, or slower, slower, or yeah. whatever. But yeah. there's a mod to get rid of that. You just click on it, and it goes faster. Is that in the list that you sent me on uh, Subsim? It is. Perfect. Yeah. So I sent you that list. It's got that on there. There's the expanded radio. So like your radio officer can play radio stations, and there is a benefit to that. So like if you just really got you know your rear end handed to you in a depth charging, but you made it, your morale might be low. So you can go on there and have your radio officer play music, and that will increase the rate at which morale recovers. Okay. But, you know, copyright, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, there's only like a couple of songs that each radio station plays. So yeah. with the radio mod, there's, there's a bunch of music that gets added on there. Of course, you have to keep in mind, if you're recording this for YouTube, that if you record any uh, copyrighted songs YouTube will pick it up and demonetize the video so they may very well do that that's yeah, right I found that out the hard way our our game temporary is definitely uh, copyrighted and Jean the yeah 
John Today, or however you pronounce that French Rena Ketty song, that one's copyrighted. There's no way around it. So, what Gotta else? love it. What else do you suggest we do? I mean, is there anything else that I need to know about? Am I set to, to start a career, continue the career, just going around, sinking ships, coming back, resupplying? Yeah, I think at, at this point you're pretty well set. Um, don't forget to recharge your air because you're going to end for a rude awakening when you go to surface and you've okay. only got 10% Let's air charge. Here. Perform maintenance. That's all torpedoes. So Somewhere. if you hold the tab key, you'll have that option with your devices on the left-hand side of the screen. Aye, sir. I'm going to fire up my electric compressor. I've got a guy next to it, so it means he's on the way. Uh, and all of this stuff in your tab key, like turning on, the, on and off the pump or the compressors, you can do that in first-person view. Okay, let's try that, too. Uh, ta -da. Let's see, I need to go to... What yeah, just any here? one of your officers. And... There we go. Playing with the torpedoes now. Uh, let's see here. How do I get him to turn around? There we go. Nope, not that way. This way. So this is me moving towards the stern of the boat, which is amazing. I love this. The guys that built this game, I have to give my... I take my hat off to them. This is almost completely novel way of attacking it you know you got the best of both worlds you got the silent hunter style game plus you have the uh, rpg done well too all right well, yeah uh, and and once you get the the particulars of this play style out it can be a bit much to swallow at first but once you get the particulars of this style of play figured out it's very engaging and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So if it says this station is unused, what is that telling me? That I need to put somebody there or it's not used because I'm on the surface? Uh, let me catch up to where you are. I think you're at the uh, electric engine, electric yep. motor. Yep. Yeah, so this device is disabled. Now, if you were to go to your engine telegraph and switch to electric, because you can run on your electric motors on the surface. Right. You can assign somebody to that, and I think the guy you've taken control of is an engineer. Right. Um, so you could basically just click that click spot in first person and kind of turn it over to that, turn it over to him as a non-player character at that point. Right click to open action this press alt to s display UI, press tab to open management screen. Okay, so I know, there we go, managing electric engines. Okay. So if you if you hold the alt key, it'll it'll show you that option for the yeah, engine order telegraph. You're right, you're right, right, so I need to switch to electric machining. And now this just became occupied by Daniel. So, he's wanting to get in there really bad, so I'll move out of the way. Now, if I click on it, what happens? Nothing happens there. Managing it. Station occupied by him. What's the 5 minus greater than 4 mean? Max gear. Oh, that's... Max gear. Any ideas about that? Uh, oh, there. Um... So with the number of people that you have assigned there, it can go up up to five, but I think you're limited to the fourth speed of the engine, I think is what that means. Okay. So if you if you assign more sailors to him, you open up more speeds, just like the diesel. And the easiest way to do that is to zoom you know, roll that mouse wheel out and go to your compartment view. Okay. And that'll give you the that'll give you the user interface where you can add sailors to each individual officer. Okay. But a majority of the uh, majority of the game is going to be played in either the map or in this segmented view, this compartmentalized view here. A majority of it will be played in one of those two views, unless you're targeting where you're looking through the UZO or the periscope, for example. Yeah. So your bottom row of officers, that guy in the pinkish red shirt, 
he's currently managing the diesels or the uh, electric motor and he's got one sailor assigned to assist him with that which is really all you need because it's opened up all of the speed ranges on your engine order telegraph. Uh, yeah, all but the top one. Top speed's still grayed out, correct? Yeah, but if you if you add one officer, it'll open it up. Okay. Or two. Okay, now I'm watching. I'm, I'm on the pink shirt guy. I click on the plus sign, add sailor. And I have to wait a few seconds for somebody to catch up and get over there, right? Well, here's another point. You only have so many available sailors on duty. So on the far right-hand side, yeah, five out of five of your sailors are currently assigned to other officers. Oh, these guys here. So huh? like, yeah, so you're going to have to take somebody away from one work detail to put on his. So your, what I'll point out is your radio officer has two sailors assigned to him, but he only one can work because it's a two occupant station. Yeah. So that's why one of those little boxes is grayed out. Okay, so my radio guy is Carl Hein Schuster, expert, radio man, boarded. Uh, let's see here. I'll go back to this guy right here. One's grayed out and one's green. Yeah, so just remove the grayed out sailor and it'll free one up to go to your electric motor. Okay. Okay, let's see. Back to uh, electric motor guy. And it's not grayed out. And I click the plus sign and I think that means he should have a guy there, right? You can go give it to the electric motor guy. So you've only you've got four out of five sailors performing a task, so you've got one free guy that you can give him. So there you go. Now if you want to remove all of the sailors from a certain work detail, whatever like if you want to take all of the sailors away from your watch officer, if you hover over your watch officer there's that little no icon, the little crossbar icon. If you click that, it will release all sailors from duty under that officer. Aha, uh -huh, I see it. So I just did that for my captain. What is this guy? Radio. This guy is torpedoes. I can release them by doing that. And then this guy here, I can give him one. There we go. Now I can give him one. Okay, so this is telling me 5 of 18 are on duty. Okay, so boarded and ready. What the heck does boarded and ready? What's the difference between boarded and ready? What is boarded? Boarded is they're they're on board the ship now. So you're you're basically on your crew list. I haven't caught up to that view just yet. Okay. Here we are. All right. So this shows you all of your sailors who are aboard the ship and. What's interesting about this is you can see their personality. So right now you don't know what the personality of any, any of your sailors are. Because you're on your first patrol, you haven't been in a particularly stressful situation that it has either revealed them to be strong-willed or particularly brave or a coward. So if they're prone to cowardice, you know, they'll have a panic attack while you're getting depth charged. You may have to knock them out. <laughs> And uh, it'll put that little coward icon where it's a question. Yeah. And so you, when you get back to port, you can release him from your crew because you know you want the good, you want uh, good sailors. So, you don't want to be out to see yeah. some guy's got weak knees. Yep. So on your tasks along the top, you got task schedule and squads. I don't mess with the schedule and squads much at all. There's good YouTube tutorials on, on how to work those. Okay. But your tasks get to be pretty important. Um, basically, you have officer tasks and crew tasks. I don't want people on my observation periscope on the sailors. So I click the little sailor hat, and that will give me the list of tasks that the sailors will perform. So all you're doing is putting a number here. 10 being the highest priority, 0 being no priority at all. So you can go through each individual officer or each individual um, sailor, for yeah. example. 
and tell them what you want prioritized. So they're rating the observation scope as a six. Well, I don't want to necessarily be surrounded by destroyers and have one of those Bernards looking around um, with their scope up. Yeah. So I usually zero the scope out. And I will t I will take the six from the from the periscope and rate it to zero because I don't want them on it. Right. And I'll give that six to the ballast control valve. Okay. Now what that's going to do is it's going to put a sailor standing by at the ballast valves. That way, when you order a crash dive, the response time is reduced. Okay. Now who do I want on the observation scope? An officer. Um, you, uh, nobody really, so you can change that, yeah, sixes, and, and, you don't want, I don't want really anybody on the observation scope, in fact, what I usually do is I'll assign in the compartment view, I'll put an officer on the observation scope, and I'll give him the order to lower it, and it's like, that just basically means nobody touch this, I don't want anybody on the observation scope, because it can be spotted. All right. Yeah, so if you exit out of this, I'll show you how to do that in the uh, compartment view. All right. And it can, it can pretty much be any officer. Coming up now. And there's a lot you can do with the shifts. I mean, it's, it's kind of neat, but I don't really get that in depth on it. Okay, so I'm in the uh, side view. And I so we're in the command room. room. Yeah. You've got that sailor standing there with his arms crossed, and yep. you know he he kind of got sidelined with duty to stand there and make sure that valve doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so you can get your watch officer, or I think it can be any of the officers, and you can put them on that observation scope there. Okay. Is he an officer? He's a sailor, right? Oh, he's just a regular sailor. Okay, so yep. I need to take one of these guys. All right, not him. Not him. Basically, this guy here, right? Well, this guy's sleeping, so I can put him on there. Mm-hmm. Okay, now how do I get him to go to the observation scope? So go down to the bottom of the screen and, and click on him. Yeah. On his icon. Got it. And then the eyeball on the observation scope, just tell him to just click on it, and he'll man it. Okay, so now he's got a little circle on the floor, and that, that's him. He's going to be coming over there to it, right? There he comes. Yep, so he'll raise that scope. So now, on the top left of the screen, where it gives you your date and time, yes, sir. Uh, there's going to be there's going to be a, some icons for to keep that scope raised or to put that scope down. I strongly recommend putting that scope down and then assigning him to something else. So what's happened here is you've told the game logic that nobody needs to man this and in the event that somebody does man it, it needs to be down. Because okay. what'll happen is you're in the middle of stalking up on a convoy, you don't have any scopes up, you're listening on the hydrophones and some idiot goes over there and raises your scope and reveals your position. Alright, so now I've clicked on that hide periscope button a couple times. He's still hanging on to yep, it. So if you if you uh, zoom out, he he will probably have it in the down position. Oh, so he's just faking it there, looking busy. Yeah, I guess. And in, in the lower left, you can put him to bed, and he'll he'll go do something else and leave that scope. Yeah, this guy, this guy here, yeah. Okay, lower left, point. All right, now. I did so have the, some, so the uh, scope is down. Yeah, scope's down. I did have some icons with some ships. What is that telling me? That is telling you what your watch officer has in sight. He, so, so he sees the wreck of the ship you sunk, the two lifeboats. Oh, that's what we saw? Okay. Yeah. So that's just telling you what you have in visual range. Okay. Fantastic. And there's a lot of click spots. A lot of click spots on this boat. So like your flag even is a click spot. You can, if you get tired of looking at that thing, you can send somebody over there. If you just hit the W key and it'll raise you to the deck in that uh, compartment view. Okay. You can have a guy actually walk over there and take the flag off the pole. 
Population. That's the AA gun. How do you... There's no hot spot for the flag right now. How do you get to take it off? Uh, it's the edge scroll over just a little bit and one should appear. There's a dude standing or you can there do it in first ready. Yeah, the, or you can do it in first person view. You might not be zoomed in far enough. I can't go up. Now I can go down, I can go back. Side to side. What am I doing here? Come on, Neil, figure it out. Let me yeah, I don't know why it's not given to you. See if, yeah, see if your watch officer there can go do it in first person. This guy here. There we go. Point. Skipper. Uh, rest. Leave position. All right. I got to click, right click to get him out of it on his off his ass. Get up. Get up. Get up. Now. Work my way through here. Fast. Fast. Click on the ladder, come on up. Now I gotta back up and click on it again, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like. Uh, there we go. Cigars and cigarettes is what I make the comparison to. If, if you're a cigar smoker, you better be uh, ready to sit down and go through the entire ritual of smoking a cigar for an hour and a half. That's what's that's what U-boat is. So you know the older subsims where you don't have so much micromanaging. That's the cigarette. You know if that's you want to go enough. ahead full, yeah. uh, you both have both have their enjoyment. But if you want to go ahead full in the old school way, you just hit ahead full and they do it right away. And yes, there's time faster, involved. Faster. And somebody has to get up and walk to the engine room and engage yeah. the engines and. Yeah, no, I like that. I like that. I never, you know, if you get tired of it, you can always manage it from a higher level but you have the option of yeah. kind of you know walking through the sub being part of the crew kind of just taking it at a cinematic viewpoint yeah it's also be a very good game for a 1x patrol if i was ever crazy or stupid enough to do one of those again did you do one before yeah i posted it on yeah, it's been some years i posted it in sub sim i think it took me eight days i have to go and find that that'd be pretty interesting you know, there was a guy that did a side 103, I think it was side 103, uh, 1X patrol. And uh, it, I actually, the guy allowed me to take it and put it in the uh, Subsim Almanac. But he was really, really humorous. It was so much fun reading his, his patrol. He just got into it like crazy. He started to get a little delusional, he said. Mm -hmm. What's the green dot for off on the horizon? Um, that's going to be like your mission objective or your side mission objective. And right now, what's that? What that is telling you is basically where the center of your assigned patrol area is. Got it. And frankly, that's something I think that they should edit out and get away with as far as the user interface. But okay. that's going to be the geographical center of your patrol grid. Okay. So now it's getting dark. It's getting nighttime. The sun has gone down. Now, I don't want any too many spoilers, but at some point in the campaign, if you played this game as a uh, single player or campaign, uh, let me think. I went back to the beginning, and there were like six different, uh, I guess, stories, you said. One of them was U-48. That's the one I took on. So I'm going to follow orders. I'm going to make patrols. Uh, at what point do I come back to port? When I'm ready to or when uh, I send in the report saying I'm out of torpedoes? Okay, so uh, to the left of the engine order telegraph, your current orders are to patrol sector AN-15 to AN-46 and travel 2,000 kilometers inside that area. And it shows you a progress bar there. I got you. Um, subsequent mission, like this is your first mission, so it's probably not going to give you a lot to do. But later missions, like your second mission, it'll say you have to patrol an assigned area and travel 2,000 kilometers inside of it and sink 10,000 tons of enemy shipping okay. so it'll give you a list of things that you've got to do now when that patrol bar a grid when the progress bar goes all the way full meaning you've traveled the full 2,000 kilometers you know you've patrolled around 2,000 collective kilometers inside that patrol area it'll pop up with an option to kind of teleport back to base 
There will be a time penalty, so it may take three, four, or five days for you to get back, and it'll cut scene to a cinematic on your return to port. Or you have the option, you know, you can do the old school, you know, click your waypoints along the way and navigate yourself back to port on your own. Okay. Side missions do come up. You'll get a mission from BDU, or you'll get a message rather through your radio operator uh, from BDU, and they'll give you something. They'll tell you like, uh, you know, an experimental sonar technology has l left Southampton and is bound for Boston for further testing. We believe the ship to be in this area. Intercept it and sink it. Okay you know all other considerations secondary and so you'll have to go find him so you get those side missions some of the side missions will be you know a friendly u-boat was badly damaged and they need spare parts if you have any spare parts on your sub you know rendezvous with them at a certain point you have to remember Tommy is listening and Bletchley Park Wow so if you get one of those missions to meet with a damaged sub, there is a chance. No. You get ambushed. You'll be ambushed, so. I like that. I like that. Yep. Yeah. And, and it's, it's very immersive in the radio messages that you'll receive because sometimes they will alert you and sometimes they'll alert you just all too late that, you know, we believe our Enigma message has been decoded by the enemy and they know you're going to be in this area so you need to be on high alert so there's a lot of there's a lot of thought that they've put into this that previous sub sims have just kind of assumed yeah. you know yeah, a lot of layers to and, it a lot of complexity that's not it's straight up you know basically uh, just yeah, it's not as linear. You've got more layers. If you've got considerations like intercepted intel or HFDF, those things make you think a lot more tactically than just, you know, go here and do this. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. so if I was to continue traveling, my progress bar at the top right would get full, and at some point I could return to port. And... Is there any part yeah, of the game that people get stuck on that they don't realize they have to do this before they can move forward or they can't come into port because they didn't meet their objective? Anything that I should be aware of that people get stuck on that they can't figure out why? Um, uh, not really. The game's really good about popping up and telling you that your mission parameters have been met and that it's, you know your mission is over. And it's very clear about what it's expecting you to do so like in this case this is super easy you know you just have to travel 2,000 kilometers inside your inside your assigned patrol grid when that's over you're gonna get the drum beat and it's gonna tell you you know hey you've done everything you need to do you can send a report to be to you that your your mission's been completed that'll award you some budget points yeah. and like I said at that point you can either navigate yourself back to base or there'll be a little thing you can click that does it for you okay all right well so at this point in the, in this first mission you know it's a simple mission you just have to patrol around in this an grid square and sink whatever you happen to come across right and um uh and anyway um and the same there's not game, a lot of extra layers to it the same the save game function works pretty well yeah, it auto saves you in the settings menu. I think you can click and choose how often you want it to auto save. Okay. Um, and all of these things function in the first person view. I mean, if you want to dive, you know, there's a lot of ways to dive the boat. I mean, we can do that on the depth gauge. We can do it through the, the click points on the on the depth gauge. We can actually in first person view just walk over there and turn the valves and flood the tanks, and it'll go under. Well, still not doing what I want to do. There we go. Let's see here. Does it automatically close the hatch? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it will. On duty. Okay. Yeah, Come that's in. the last guy. Yeah, I'll close it. Get in. Get in. 
So I just did something. What did I do? Let's see. I flood the tanks. All ballast tanks are empty. Yes, sir! So it's... Oh, I see it. Flooding tanks. I saw it. There they go. Here they come. Yeah, and in your compartment view, you can actually watch the tanks flood. If you go far enough forward or aft, you can actually see the ballast tanks fill with water. What? What? And let's see here. Work my way to the front. You're saying if I go up here, I can see the ballast tanks fill? Yeah, if, you, if you're in the compartment view, like Am your I? damage control type view. Oh, how do I do that? Switch to Just mouse wheel out all the way. All the way. Take you a second to catch up with me. Yeah, I'm, I'm. You're still running to the torpedo room from my point of view. Yeah. I'm about eight or nine seconds behind you. Okay, I'm still. There we go, I'm mousing out now. Yeah, so if you get into that compartment view and go all the way to the forward torpedo room far enough where you can actually see the, the tubes going out the front of the compartment. Oh, right here. There. That's, okay. that's your forward um, ballast, ballast tank. tank. And as you, if you order somebody to surface, yeah, uh, you'll actually see that water leave the tank. And I don't know if you can, it's kind of dark, so, but if you scroll around the boat, you'll get fish swimming by. <laughs> oh yeah, I saw that a couple times. That's pretty cool. So that's my ballast tank. That's, uh, that's your tubes out the front yeah. and your ballast tank. There it goes. Yeah, you're right. Uh, this is beautiful. I have to definitely applaud the, the you know developers of this game. They, you can tell they put a lot of thought and work into it. They didn't phone this in at all. This mm -hmm. is a beautiful game. Yeah, and like you're on your depth meter, on your depth gauge, where you have the icons to submerge or go to periscope depth or crash dive. Yeah. You know, a couple of those icons were added based on suggestion from the community. So it's not like they don't listen, you know, like the sound, the uh, sound check. Yeah, routine sound check, like that. getting all those steps combined. Yeah, and that was recommended in the Steam community. And I'll tell you, in one or two releases later, they had it in there. Yeah, that's smart. I mean, it makes sense. Plus, it's you know, there's a reason why the players want that makes sense it's a smart move all right well john is there anything else you uh, want to add to this i think we've covered this pretty thoroughly i'm kind of looking forward to concluding this uh stream and playing the game now yep that's that's pretty much all i got i mean it's it, once you figure out the nuance of this kind of new style of playing this type of game um it gets easier and you know you're going to spend a lot of your time in the compartment segmented compartment view and in the map view and if you get used to that it gets gets a lot easier okay and a lot more fun a lot okay. more fun you know if you engage in some of the side missions and they'll you know they'll send you on a raid to scap a flow or they'll uh, I mean that you're setting up a weather station so you have to be real careful about you know these boarding party missions because if you get bounced while your boarding party is aboard that steamer that you stopped, yeah, you you risk losing that crew, you know that boarding party. So an officer or two officers and three, four, five of your sailors, you know they're gone now, and you've invested a lot into them. So like setting up the weather stations and putting spies on on the land, and you know some of those side missions aren't super historically accurate, but. They're fun. Yeah, they're fun. You know, and like they're them. not completely inaccurate. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that the uh, Kriegsmarine, you know, they did some of that. But you're saying if I uh, if I goof up and I lose a couple guys in a, uh, a boarding party, then if I get a mission to do something else, I may be in a jam because I don't have those guys available. Yeah, you're going to be short a couple of officers, and that makes your life considerably more difficult because now you're spreading the workload you know, right now you're spreading the workload among five officers. You have, you can go, see, as you spend your reputation points, you can, you know, get more officers aboard your boat as your reputation gets higher and higher. 
and that spreads the workload out. But if you lose some of these guys, I mean, they can be killed in an air raid against your boat, or yeah, you know, they yeah. can be. That puts some. There's all kind of reasons you could lose them. Yeah, it gives you real consequences to your actions. Though I like that. Of course, if you save the game, you can always load it back up again, right? Yeah, that is true. Yeah, that is true. I got Rick. I don't remember if do you remember Rick from uh, our subsim meeting. He's a guy from California. He's a real cool dude. Yeah, I, think I, I, I had would remember him if I saw him. Or yeah, yeah, he's or about my size. Yeah, he's yeah. Uh, he's in the chat telling me uh, he's surprised that I'm not already into this game. I guess he missed the very beginning because I try to make excuses for why I didn't get into this game. I'll just yeah, make those yeah. excuses one more time. Basically, when this game came out. Wolfpack was about a month old, and so I had my hands full with Wolfpack, and I was still working as a driving uh, a manager at Airgas. So I just I started this game a couple times. I got into the tutorial, and if I remember right, it asked me to send a diver down, and then it was kind of scripted, which is fine. And it sent the diver down, and it said, "Oh, you're under attack. You have to leave the diver behind. Cut the rope. You have to sacrifice him." And it broke my heart because that diver was my first guy. So. I kind of got kicked out of the game from doing that. Plus, to be honest with you, at the beginning, the, the interface wasn't as intuitive, at least for me. And I kind of yeah. got stuck doing one or two things, and I thought, well, I'll pick it up later. But with my work schedule and with Wolfpack demanding all my time, I just never got back into it. Uh, but I did, like I said earlier, I did say to myself, at least, at some point in the future, when I'm thinking... What am I going to do today? I'm going to play U-Boat, and I'm going to get into the career, and I'm going to work my way through the whole war. So, with John's well, help, I think I, I went on my way. I didn't enjoy that early tutorial, you know. I wasn't a big fan of it, but they've totally revamped that. And, um, I mean, they've made a, a whole host of changes to the game since it was since it first came out you know when it first came out i found it enjoyable but like i said it, it, it had a steep learning curve the ui was kind of all over the place and there's been a lot of these changes that have made it more enjoyable but it still has as you can see there's still a steepness to learning how to play it yeah but once you get over that hill and this uh, i mean i've got Probably by the end of the day tomorrow, I will have passed a thousand hours of playtime on this thing. Yeah, yeah, no, I can see it. I can see it. I'm looking forward to it. See how your diesel's smoking there? Let me go back. Look, I'm out of here and turn around if I can. Turn around. There we go. Yep, you can probably I see just it. mouse wheel it all the way. So that'll betray your position to as you approach a convoy. Really? Yep, so they'll see you easier. So what? there's things you can do about that. Um, if We're you switch to down. your electric motors, obviously you get rid of that diesel exhaust. Yep. But another thing is, as skill sets for your various officers begin to unlock, your chief engineer who manages that diesel engine, yeah. he will get better at his job, and he can run the engine more efficiently, and as long as he's assigned to it, you get rid of that. That's so cool. That's so cool. All so right. they've thought of a lot. Yeah, I can tell they have. That's a really good attention to detail. That makes the game more enjoyable. There's so many little things that you learn along the way, and every one of them is a joy, you know, because it just gets you more and more into the world of the U-boat war. Yeah. Agreed. All right, well... John, well, that's all I got. I really appreciate your time, my friend. Thank you very much. Uh, that's no problem. I'll send you the bill. Touch with you later. And uh, like I say, if you come down to South Houston sometime, come by Cougar Trap, and I'll buy you some barbecue, my friend. Sounds like a plan, buddy. Enjoy playing the game. Thank you, John. Appreciate your help.